All right, welcome back to the Focus Podcast. I got a hey special yo. guest here. What's going on? Thank you. Hey, yo. What's up, man? Chilling. This is my guy here. Yeah, yeah. So, welcome. Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's good shit. This year, we just, you know, chat music, smoke herb. As we do. You know, as we do. Some coffee. Uh, Wait, hold on. I got to crack. I got to crack this open in right. So. All right. Good. I got to talk about the first time I met Focus. All right. It was actually the first time I performed live ever. Yo, I remember. I was at, it was at a film cafe, Kensington yes. Market. Yeah. Yep. And me and my homeboy duo, first time performing. Oh, yeah. Now you're open mic. You know, like. It, it, uh, All right. Let's spark one off here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Focus was in the back. We went up. Film we were cafe, doing. Yeah. We were doing Shout our joints. Cafe. For real. And, um. You know, big man pulled us aside afterwards. He's like, "Yo, you guys are like, you guys are really sick." Oh yeah. But uh, when you're when you're playing audio files, just make sure you have the wave, not the MP3. Oh yeah, yeah. And we were like, "Yo, what do you mean? What? How can you tell the diff? Huh?" And it was just like it was our inexperience, and just like, "Yo, we went on stage for like two to four minutes, played two tracks, and he was able to identify. Okay, shit. Yeah, you guys got it." You have a cadence, you have it a technique. It has like a tinny, a tinny sound. Mm-hmm. And then, but it was like, here's the performative element. Here's how you fill in that blank of like, okay, now just level up one time. Mm-hmm. And it's the easiest level up of life. Switch your MP3 to a wave. And now suddenly the sound is so much thicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got schooled by my uh, sound guy because he's a front of house guy. So he knows all the, you know, the details of mm-hmm. sound sound design so yeah. he's basically it's like when you have an mp3 it's compressed so you mm-hmm. know this right so it's compressed and you lose a lot of the effects you put on yeah and the other so it sounds condensed mm-hmm. and then so when you play it over an amplification you bump that up that is basically denseness it's empty space yeah it's juice. just fill, yeah. basically filling it out with empty space and mm-hmm. um, he's like when you have a wave, it's all, uh, it has its limits, right? So then when you play it in loudspeakers, mm-hmm. it's clear. Exactly. When, so it's like that's, that is the misconception with a lot of stuff in your phone. Mm-hmm. And I've been to places where people are like, hell no, we don't want none of that shit on your phone. And mm-hmm. I understand what they're reacting to. They're reacting to people playing MP3s. Yep. Pretty much. Yep. So. Yeah, man, if I was a file. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I've, yeah, I've shocked people with, uh, people are like, damn, those are good fucking files, man. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you do it you know, right. If, it, if it's bounced right, if it's mixed proper. Mixing is a magical thing. thing. And I, you might do this already, but I'm old school. So it's like, I grew up with all the like changes of the mediums. You're, you guys mm-hmm. are changing with a lot of ones quickly too, but we went through like tape, CD. Yep. Uh, fucking MP3 players mm-hmm. all in one childhood, just yep. ba- ba- bang, bang, bang. Yep. Like so, it was the way I mix is everything. I listen to everything. I listen oh, yeah. to the shittiest speaker. Oh, I listen to right. the speaker on the, the the computer. I listen to good Sennheiser headsets. Mm-hmm. I listen to great monitors. Mm-hmm. I listen in a car and a shitty speaker. I listen I in a car with too much bass. Yeah. So it's like, um. You want to like, test every. At the end of the everything. day, you have no idea who it is that's it, like that you're connecting with, right? And like what they have access to. I like that. Or yeah. even like what their preference is. Yeah. Like me, like I have um, years ago, one of my neighbors, they were you know doing a garage sale and they had a record player, so I was like, I can't say no, you yeah. know, I can't say. No. And it had, they had the whole tower too. Yeah. They had a cassette deck. They yeah, had the yeah. EQ. That like yeah. it was just it was beautiful. So I brought it home, Dude. and I've been collecting like cassettes and no. records ever since. This isn't to say like it, that's not my primary mode of yeah. listening to music, but like if I went to a show and I saw somebody had a cassette, I'd be like, like I just respect that they were looking out for that niche. Yeah, and I'd be like, fuck, like I have that. Yeah, shit. Let me let me slide a few bucks for that. Let, let me grab the cassette because I know nobody else is getting this. Yeah, yeah. It's a piece of memorabilia that will like. I'll be able to hold true to my own. Yeah. You know? So did you buy, like, what, because you're obviously younger than me, but mm. um, what was, like, your 
your teenage years, what era was that in? Was that you were in MP3s already? Were you like yo? I was a tail end of CDs. For, yo, I was in the time of like media fire. So how old are you? I'm 25. Holy shit! You're, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're talking about holy shit. <laughs> It's a clean, it's clean twenty, clean twenty. This guy is almost as old as nine eleven. Holy shit! Hey, 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 hey. you are absolutely correct. <laughs> yo, 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 so you've never yeah. held anything. That's the thing I'm saying. Is like when you no, buy, that's not true. No, okay, maybe I'm not hundred percent, but mm. like my teenage years mm. and my twenties was always buying CDs. Yep, but that's kind of gone. You know what I'm I saying? Like, you so you're hey, in a generation hey, hey, hey. that is like gone. So. The excitement for a tape, I understand because mm-hmm. I, I feel bad for people your age because you guys really missed out on oh, facts. the beauty of music, man. Dude. It's like the hype that you felt, like every Tuesday was new CD Tuesday at Bro. HMV, and it was like mm. you went and you saw the ones that you had intentions in going for, but mm-hmm. also it's like, oh, you discover a new one. Bro, you ever um, you ever see that that documentary on Plady? Downtown. No. Fuck. Oh, God. Palladium. Oh uh, no, 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 play the record. <coughs> oh yeah, play the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. made a documentary on them. Oh really? I should check and it out. oh man, it's for me. It was like a look into the past. You know, yeah. like, it was something my older cousins always used to tell me about because they were DJs out in yeah. like London, Toronto, and shit. Yeah. And they'd be like, "Yeah, like every Wednesday, play the record would put out." all the new vinyl like they would go out to Montreal they'd get that shit that, like it was Everybody. all by hand Yeah. and then you'd have your regular crew of dudes they would all come in and you guys would just chat about oh shit yo yo who's playing trumpets yeah, on yeah. this yeah. oh shit like that's like what those, I was trying to get at ooh. too is the credits the credits mm-hmm. were the, the most exciting thing it's Max. like bro you look at like this guy produced this what like, no that's way no nah, way. there's no way you got there's this there's no way like. he produced it and there's no <laughs> booklets anymore dude that's the thing was the like i the last two albums i only did a cover and i i regret it because it's like when you when you did an album you did a photo shoot you had a back you had what was called it was a, a vision, spine right? yeah there was an entire like there was a whole piece of art to it too. that it was its own exactly it's artistic craft like that's yeah you're creating not only a feeling or a vibe or like just you're creating a conversation with the audience yeah. through not only the music, but like that's your behind the scenes. That's a great, you know what I'm saying? Like that's your, but, that's your but on the other hand, I'll defend, you know, your generation. You guys have a different aspect of it. And that is birthed out of. Yes. Napster. You're not. Yeah. So Napster not wrong. Mis, was misconstrued as stealing music, but I'll mm-hmm. tell you firsthand, I was, uh, the prime suspect of Napster. I was the kid who was in his first year of college huh. when Napster came out. 99, yeah. I was in school. Shut so up. me and my buddy, he was on ICQ. This is how old I was. So he's like, there's this thing called Napster. Yeah. And we can rip albums. So what it was is like, you see who had the good dial up or whoever yeah, had yeah. the good internet mm-hmm, speed because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you would go halfway through it and it would stop because some dude would... that shit used to happen with LimeWire all the time LimeWire Bro. came out of Napster so Napster was basically like the way we saw Napster was like word of mouth yeah so we started listening to the Drake Chronic 2001 on Napster and we're like I gotta buy this yeah I heard it before the radio you know what I mean? So it was like a discovery thing. It was a new discovery oh, that's thing that's so for Ill. kids in school. And we were like, yo, this is, you got to hear this. It's like you were the one breaking the news to your friend yeah. that this new album was out. And if you look at the early 2000s, record sales soared at its yeah. peak. It's peak. Like it peaked all the way till 2008, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it helped groups like Destiny's Child, like mm-hmm. Metallica, all the ones that were fighting against it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was basically like helping them sell more records, pretty much. Absolutely. So now, 25 years later, I think it's used for what it was meant to be. Mm. So Napster is almost like a catalyst of your social media mixed with your music. The behind the scenes stuff that yeah, we call yeah, yeah, yeah. content today. You know what I mean? Which is, I hate that word so much. I hate it because hate it's word. so like... Content, it's so lazy. Like, it's so 
unintentional, unintentionally, but entirely intentionally, like, reductive. Yeah. Like, you're just, whatever it is you do, it doesn't matter what it is you do. Yeah. Content. Yeah. And then you just throw it out. It is that vague. And it's just like... And you're just like, and this describes everything you do. Yeah. It, it breaks my heart <laughs> to think of it as a word so vague, you know? Yeah, well, it's also, it could be the same set as, like, when the video came out. Music video, like the song mm. Video Killed the Radio Star. So Ooh. it's like it killed the imagination of of listening to an album by yourself. Mm-mm-mm. You know, it's like reading a book and then seeing the movie version of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I liked about... It takes away from the imagination. Yeah. The, and the music, the well, the music from, video yeah. became uh, the selling tool. Like, that was the way to sell it was singles. prescriptive of the song. Like, this is what the song is, type deal. Or it was like the only song you could sell on the album. <laughs> it's like nine times out of ten you get. I was like, damn, the video is good, the song's good. You get the album, I'll be like, <sighs> yo, it kind of hurts when you go back to some old records and there's like four on them that certifiably don't slide. Oh, they're horrible. And it's just like, <laughs> you want one of these? They're just a little two milligram. No, 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 I'm cruising. So my body's hurt. So this is, oh, it's all good. Um. um yeah, so tell us about uh, the last couple of years. So, like, Mm-mm. we met kind of like in lockdown. So. Yeah, on the tail end. Tail end of lockdown, open mic. So, yeah, let's go from Keeps there. We left bit, yeah. off there. Okay. And I, then I saw you at uh, Painted Lady a few times. Yes. Last couple times with Painted Lady. And then yeah. there was another night where you were... Um, shit, where was that spot? I think you came to one of my shows. What you had a you? residency at a... Um, oh, T.O. Lounge. T.O. Lounge. Yeah, yes. you did show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sule yeah. was there. Yeah. yeah. got to meet Sule. Like, nice. all that. Yeah, my man. God. It was cool shit. It was my cool buddy. shit. It really, like... I think that night in particular opened my eyes to the potential of performing with live. Mm. With a live band. Yeah. Because, like... As you say, there's a difference in generation and understanding of music. When I was coming up, I always thought it was like artist and like instrumental or beat. Yeah. But like the way you guys were all working together on stage, I was like, yo, shit, this live thing is like the instruments bring energy yeah. in a way that like complements you as a performer. Exactly. And I was like, fuck, I want to perform with a band. Can. Yeah. I know. We're gonna get that one going. We're yeah, get that one you heard it here. <laughs> we'll come out to uh, Grossman's. It's a, a good one. Every, once, yeah. once a third, once once a month. Okay. On the fourth Thursday, every fourth Thursday of the month. So they call it the fourth Thursdays. So whatever that four. Sometimes there's five Thursdays. So whatever the fourth Thursday lands on, mm-hmm. that's the day they do it. And it's an open jam with all like blues, jazz players. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I've really sharpened my skills. Yeah. And also, it's like what it does is allows you to grow, like mm-hmm. a grow as an artist, mm-hmm. and be like get out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. of just being on the beat that you know already. So it helps you memorize your stuff more because it's like, ooh, I don't have these. You have to adapt it on these the fly. trigger sounds that I have Absolutely. memorized. You know what I mean? So it throws you into the deep end quite a few times. I really like the way you said that. Trigger yeah. sounds. Yeah. Every artist has this trigger sounds on a beat. Yeah. Certain things that you identify and you know that you have to hit a word a certain way to click. It's almost like a lock. Yeah. For you to keep into the beat. Yeah, you stay locked that's in. That's why they stay exactly. locked in, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I've never done double ups because the guy used to. I don't know a lot of people. You don't do doubles? Never. <gasps> Not live. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. You don't do doubles live. Actually, oh, no. You're actually, talking about most, a backing, like a performance Most of track. my recording is like raw. There's no. There's not a lot of backing tracks. There's yeah. not a lot of double ups. Double oh. ups not for recording and for live. There's not a lot of uh, backing because it's an accent. At well, the end of the day, there, I, it I is. It like a tool it's necessary, I think, in certain aspects, right? Like, yeah. there's um, elements to it that I would be open for, but mm-hmm. I was so mm-hmm. the opposite of the artist I used to work with because he had them and he would forget 
verses sometimes. So it's a fucking train wreck when you do that. So when you do fuck up, yeah. it's no biggie. Yeah. It's just like nobody notices that you fuck up at all. There's parts, there's times that I've completely forgot a verse and nobody has any idea because I just let it go to the guitar player. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I just let the guitar player do a solo. Or sometimes I've flipped verses like I've done my second verse first. I did the in wrong order. Really? Nobody yeah. notices because huh. it's like the same. Well, I mean, you don't know groove, what you don't right? know. Yeah. yeah. So if you slide on it a certain way and it feels right, then it feels right. Yeah. That's it. So it helps you in a way that it shows that you're still in charge of your show. Mm. So nobody can really judge you for your performances where it's like, oh, he fucked up this time, you know? So I'd rather, like, fuck up and not people know than, Mm. you know, do the double ups. The double ups never really worked for me because I think because my voice is heavy already. Mm. I don't really need a lot of it. Yeah. And if you just add a little reverb or, like, some... um, Ah, you do it. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. If you do it with a verb, it it (coughs) achieves, like... It's a different it's, thing, but a similar feel. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just knew for that's just my experience. Like I don't. No, bro. I don't that's know, your steez. Everybody does it differently, but it's like I know. It's, primary, it's a piece of your signature. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen, like I said, I've seen mm. my friend fuck up a few times with it, and it was just like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Now people know you screwed up. <laughs> you know, yo. So I was telling one of our homies the other day. I was like. Genuinely, some of my favorite performances that I ever see are the ones where things go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Which he was like, "Yo, what? That makes like no sense." And I'm like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait think about it." In a performance where something goes wrong, you learn the most, uh-huh. and you also, if they mess up and they still push through, there's an appreciation for that as well, because it's like every artist gets to that stumbling block. And some artists, when they mess up, they just stop. Yeah. Other artists will be like, ah, shit. And then they'll come back through. Yeah. And you're like, I appreciate that you pushed yeah. through that. You know? Yeah. Like, it just it shows commitment and energy on their side. And I'm always like, I don't know, it's one of my favorite things. Well, like, it's growth. It's, it's also like, you're going to fuck up. Exactly. So, just let, just roll with it. And then, like, don't try and... Uh, yeah, that's well. It's weird because we're balanced because you're a perfectionist sometimes, and at the same time, it's like you know you're gonna fuck up. You have to so, be an adaptive failure. I heard a, a wicked. It was a good interview with George Carlin back in the day, and he was like, he changed from like if you look at his stuff before he was like 35, it was all clean cut on like these talk shows, and then after this, he just turned the corner, and then he basically said he was held up on like his material that he had and then he was just like well the best way to do it is just finish that Mm -hmm. make more Mm -hmm. and it's like you'll learn each time like you'll get better and better each time instead of holding on something and trying to perfect it absolutely it's like okay there's things in my first album that i would want to change there's things in my side like each album it's like you look listen back to it it's like oh i can fix that but Mm -hmm. you did because you've improved yeah. the next project you've done. You know, it's about improvement. And it's- so I wonder, what are your thoughts on going back to old projects and reworking old songs? It's interesting you said that because I tried something and I tried to upload my instrumentals and I was going to re-release them as like its own project. Yes, I do believe in this. So I had... A fucking hell of a time with CD Baby because it was like I created my own problem. So I initially had CD Baby long time ago, which I was mm. smart long time ago. My engineer he told me how to do this. Mm. So by the time my second album came out, I didn't like the deal CD Baby had at the time. It was thirty percent they would mm. take. So I was like, I want to re- remove this and put it into a Toronto one, which is called. Uh, Indie, indie pool. Mm. So I was going to do my second album in that and pull my first album, which is never do. <laughs> it's like, 
If you're going to release your music on a platform, make sure you know 100% that you want to never really it's it's such a pain in the ass so i removed right. my first album from cd baby and okay. they thought i thought it was terminated so oh, it wasn't 100 percent terminated yeah, yeah. so when i went to do my instrumentals it wouldn't release it because it was just like this is similar to something you oh, have that's released no. and it's like no i tried to so you're just doing a re-release you're doing like a an edit you're doing a yeah so i got frustrated with it and oh, i was just like fuck no. it if somebody could help me on that end, I would do it as its mm. own package. I would do like, you could get all the instrumentals from an album. All the albums. Dude, one it's... Thing. Cause it is, I like, I do like, I, there's one thing I did do, I made a, a doc mm. uh, during the lockdown. And it was like immediately when everything happened, I mm. captured all the shit. So I took three tracks from my second album and I just made a doc. And mm -hmm. it was like no interviews, no no voiceover, no nothing. It was just the instrumentals. Mm -hmm. So the instrumentals were like the the musical narrative. Okay. So I did that with those. There's many things I would like to do. There's one in the second album that's eleven minute song, and I wanted to make a short movie about it. So okay. I already had like a concept, and my one of my editors who helps me. We thought up about a whole concept, but it's a big mm -hmm. project. And mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah, it's and then it's something for my second album, and it's like I'm so far past that. Mm -hmm. But there's there's ideas, and then also I've had a friend who's a filmmaker. He wanted to make one of my album, one of my songs from my second album into like a short film. Mm -hmm. So I'd be open for that, but it's like I just don't, I can't. I would give it away. I would just be like, you do it. I. Like it's too much of a plate. Gotcha. Uh, I want to move on with the pro. Like each project has, to me, has because I am a camera operator and I made my own videos. Mm. Each each album is like a new phase of my multimedia as well. Mm. And not only just my music, but also like my presentation, exactly, visual wise too. Yeah. So I'm coming out on a different angle in the new album, which is going to be cool. I'm gonna bust open some old cameras and Sick. use some old because I yeah. I have footage from myself from 1999 all the way till now hey yo that's kind of cool and I have it all on different formats yeah so it started with a, a H uh, like a, a high 8 mm. and then a DV camera and then a mini DV camera and then Oh, that's a cool SD card. So it has you all can the create quality. a cool like chronology. Yeah, it has all yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. it has all the qualities that went through the early two thousands, right? Uh -huh. And I have like twenty years of footage, so it's like huh. somehow match those same. I just I like this. blasting off ideas, but I like this. Yeah, no, that's it's very it's very cool. Yeah, that a lot of people don't have is like twenty years of footage straight through. That's facts, bro. Yeah, like that's your bag. You have. I don't want to touch it. It's just like if somebody else wants to make a doc, hell yeah, I'll sit and, mm. you know, I think it's something that would be cool to leave on the back burner. So if I did do anything, it's like, oh, here's a cool piece of, like, Eminem did 8 Mile, and everybody knows that it's about his life, mm -hmm. but he made a theatrical movie. I'd be like, here's f actual footage from like mm. 20 years. That would be a cooler like compiling in like it'd a, be my yeah. different my individual story right and, yeah and it'd be like a very like camcorder kind of like pov assortment of you know yeah it's like a lot you're of, in the life of a lot of empty nights <laughs> of seats yo and yeah, that's man. the truth that's just the truth it's just like the truth of canadian hip-hop it's so let's turn a corner here Let's turn a corner. Canadian what does Canadian hip hop, hip -hop mean to you? I, this is the uh, first. This is the first question that I've ever said like that. <laughs> uh, what does Canadian hip hop mean to me? Yeah. All right. So. I'm gonna roll some. Of it. I'm gonna bust some of this up. <laughs> All right. So Canadian hip hop. Like, who do you? Who comes to mind immediately when you think of Canadian hip hop, like artists? Shad. Obviously, the 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 one obvious one we all know. I think but. oh word <laughs> no just, Drake okay no 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 I don't I don't look at Drake as Canadian hip hop I look at Drake as Canadian music he's very That's like true. in the broad spectrum of he's not a rapper 
He's a performer. He's a performer. And he represents that realm in a great way. That's a great answer. Oh, well, okay, uh, it's so. when you ask Canadian hip hop. Yeah. The first name I thought of was Shad. Yeah. I've seen him play. For real? Yeah. Yo. He played with uh, Avid one time. Mm-hmm. Nice and Abby. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, we went to see them at like uh, near Lansdowne and Bloor. You know oh, where, that'd be cool. You know where the, the Valley Village used to be? Mm. Lansdowne and Bloor, like before you go to the bridge. Yeah. Anyways, it's down that road. Bet. That road that has a lot of like uh, industrial air. Mm-mm-mm. There's a venue down there. And I went out with them one night to. Yeah. And that's what he, he was like taking off. Anyway, so. That's kind of fucking cool. Yeah, he's cool. I like, he's a good performer. I've seen him maybe a couple times. Yeah. Oh. Are you familiar with the name Raz Fresco? No. Well, he's um GTA artist. He's worked with like. One of my favorite producers, Cook and Soul. Have you heard Cook and Soul's produ- uh, beats? No, I gotta get it. Dude, that. yo, I gotta, I gotta send you some beats. You gotta get some um, some stuff, yeah. But yeah, he performed, he opened with this guy, The Sixth Letter, for a year old Droog. Have you heard year old Droog? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Bro, names are coming uh, around. But yeah, it was just, it was cool. Year old Droog, you know, he's an artist from the US, comes to Toronto, he's getting Toronto artists to be the openers at a show you know what yeah, I mean that's good and it's like it's a good way of bringing light to these dope MCs that sometimes it's just hard for us to all connect the dots together yeah the GTA is such a big place it is and there's also like a lot of uh, this is kind of the point of the podcast too it's like a Canadian link you know Honey. it's like so Artists can link up with other artists in Canada and, you know, absolutely do logistics and mm. uh, especially like the way with technology is, it's like, mm. it's easier to, uh, like everybody's doing their own thing in Toronto, but it's easier to like help each other grow, Fair you nice. know, it's just like, cause it's not that much work nowadays. It's just like po- repost stuff. Just you know, kind of share like, o- share other people's stuff, promote other like every. I know everybody's got their shows to pr- promote, but it's but like honestly, pro- it just promote like, each other's shows. It comes from being just down with the shits. Yeah, it's like you yeah. like cool things, yeah. you find cool things, and you just chat about cool things. Yeah, it's like yo, like <laughs> like I just said, you hear about this guy Raz Fresco. <laughs> yeah, like it, that's just a cool thing I saw the other day, and I wanted yeah. to tell you, and like that's how it should be. Well, that's my. My way of, you know, I I was I have to select and pick how many nights I go out, you know, because I'm that to, one, and I'm in my album mode, and it's also like I'm not ready to perform till I'm ready to perform, and yeah. so it's like I'm not, I've been invited out for a lot of open mics and stuff like that, and I was just like, I gotta pick and choose my nights, but this is an excuse, like this podcast is a good excuse for me to understand. Who you're with? Who every guest I have has artists they work with. So it's like yeah, that's, I want to get, I want to know people in the scene. I want to go see more shows. I want to go see other artists' shows. Um, I like, I feel Collins like know? I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> in the show. I want to know yeah. all these strangers like yo. Oh, that's right. That's dude. <laughs> strangers like me. Yo, yeah. that's what it's all about, no, man. It is. Oh, that's the honest. definition of that song. Oh man, yo! And I was saying that, <laughs> like, you know, it is, it is, you know, you gotta conserve your energy too. But that time I went back to Painted Lady when I saw you there, that mm-hmm. was like, because it was like almost a year we hadn't done stuff. I think so. And so we're getting out there, and you get that feeling back again of like, oh yeah, this is what I hung out all night for. Like, okay. yeah. This is what I hung out all night for, you know? This is how, you know, like, this is why mm. I waited all this time to play a few songs. It was like that feeling, you know, playing live. Yeah. And um, I want to, like... It's a bug, eh? Yeah. Performing live? I've yeah. talked to people about this. Once you start that first one, that's the scariest one. Yeah. But then, as you kind of, like, keep going, it's still kind of scary. Yeah. 
But then eventually, you just become a fiend for the mic. Yeah. You're just like, <sighs> yeah. You're not even that. Mic. It's me and three. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Just let me uh, let me suit up real quick. Yeah. Get to the stage. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, let's get caught up. Like, how where where, where have you been playing in the last few uh, Ooh. year or so? Man. All right. So I recently did a headline show at Open Concepts. Sweet. That's a nice yeah, man. area with my boy Earl. EM. EM. Oh, yeah. I saw EM the other day. He was here last week with no with Ray. Way. We did a podcast. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Nah, man. It was fucking... It was sick seeing him. I saw him at um, Jay-Z's headlining show at a supermarket. Yeah, he's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. It was just a cool, like... It was a cool link to have. I ain't seen him in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And but... Yes, that was like open concepts. That's a great place. Yeah. Yeah. Headline there. Had a fucking... Nice. Great night. Did my set all nice. I blended hip-hop into spoken word poetry. Nice. It was very, there were ebbs, ebbs and flows of feeling and energy. Yeah. Being able to quiet it and then just bring it up. You know what I mean? That's good. We could do that. And it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to set up the stage how I wanted to also. Oh, oh nice. Yo. We had like the brick walls. I jammed a Kennedy in 401 sign. So I had a Kennedy in 401 sign. Oh, so the props. <laughs> nice. Man. Oh, bro. Nice. All I had was props. Nice. Oh, nice. my days. I had um oh shit I had um waypoints yeah so I did this I did the scavenger hunt over the summer project logos <laughs> and I jammed the uh, the stakes that yeah. I use for project logos for the waypoints jammed them in different like flower pots and shit so it was like all surrounding oh that's cool my logo the visual effects we had a VJ a visual jockey. Damn. It was crazy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, we just enjoyed the night. It was cool. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. No, I never stressed. Uh, no, that's a cool spot. He took me there one time. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and I know that place from years ago because that was the slaughter yards. Yeah, right. That's where all the pig factories were up there. <coughs> I think they might still be. Some yeah. of them. There's yeah, like one or two tucked in the corner. Yep. But it's... Those are the stockyards because that was like mm-hmm. the, end of the junction where. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so yeah, no, nah, so get some water. Yeah, yeah do as you do, do as you do, do as you do. We'll be right back. Play some water. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> mm mm mm. Your what's the word? We are oh, Ooh, is that in a mason jar? Yeah. It's <laughs> a rare interruption, folks. Sorry. No, nah, man. Sometimes you need drop. bevies. Yeah. Sometimes we need bevies. Well, we'll get the fridge up here soon for the Ooh. I, I like went that. to uh, a show in the States. I got to the States for the first time again since the lockdown, which was a good little goal. And they had a fridge in the green room, and it was full of beers, and they're just like, take whatever you want. And I was yeah. like, this isn't Canada. <laughs> Nobody does this in Canada. <laughs> Unless no, you're on like, the big gigs, you know? Mm-hmm. But it's like, eh, get the little like nothing in Toronto and Canada. <laughs> Anywho. So you did the open concepts. That's cool. Where else? Um, I frequent Loud Studios yeah. Open Booth. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice like collection of artists that come together and they collab on different tracks, mm-hmm. different beats. And it's like a very good... It's a sick opportunity to like experiment with different flows and beats that you wouldn't necessarily think to go on. Oh, nice. But... Every like that's kind of the game. That's the challenge. So there's no preparation. You're just no preparation. This. It's just the beat plays. Oh, that's great. All the artists in the room hear yeah. it at the same time, yeah. and you just get to writing. Oh, sweet. And then it's like whoever goes on first goes on first. Oh, nice. Then it's bomb, 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 bomb. If somebody has a hook, they have a hook. But if not, first, first, that's first, how you first, make first. Song. And it's like 
it's sick to see the same beat approached by so many different people. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, different different ideas. You just different. like it opens your it opens your eyes to so many like concepts and possibilities. Yeah, it was just a wicked like it's it's a wicked experience every time. Nice. And main man hibernation the rap hibernation ugh, hibernation <laughs> the rapper. Yeah. Fuck. He engineers Yeah, that's us for a second. He engineers the um the open booth. Okay, where is that again? Where is it? It's um uh, is it on Blur or no? Is it... Mm-mm. No. It's in Scarborough. Okay. Villain yeah. Progress. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I uh I put together a festival here in the summer. Mm. In the in the beaches here. Mm. So that was Yes, fun. fuck. Yeah, it was fun. I wanted to come through. and No, next year. But yes. uh, it was super last minute. I kind of like got the approval. And mm. I was like, oh, wasn't expecting this. Yeah. And it was like thrown together in a month, really. In a month, right. like five weeks to put it together. Damn. And I went on tour for two weeks. So it was like I had to get it done in three weeks. Yeah. And then I had to get it done, mostly done when I went away and then I came back it was just like a fury in the last the four days mm. but uh, a lot of things I have to learn from but it was definitely a good experience to get going got you yeah yeah and uh, it's something that the beaches wouldn't expect at all because there was a whole mix like we had mm. a good mix uh, Ian was there so it was you know, yeah, rapper, I saw I saw, some, I saw the title with, card. The title yeah. card looked pretty thick. Like it was oh, cool. we had a lineup, dude. We had yeah. Marcus Walker and his band. We had Aaron D'Souza. We had uh, Fifth Project, who's like sick rock band. We had mm. seven acts. Yeah, damn. Yeah, and we oh, had that's a nice night. We had a great crew. We yeah. had two uh, young ladies who were the, uh, the sound op and the and the the, the first eight, the first assist. Mm. like the audio assist and uh, the two of them rocked it like the two of them did the whole festival mm. so the crew was awesome I had an AV crew so yeah a lot to improve on and I'll just do the same thing yeah. and just kind of tweak everything and then that's all you can do more man. about like getting some you do the thing you learn the things you implement the things yeah you know what I mean exactly because it's the only way so you got some stuff in the the can, or are you, are you? How much did you? When did you release some some stuff? It was just a while ago, right? I just. Uh yeah, so through Project Logos, I released twenty three tracks. Damn. Uh, soft like soft release, pretty yeah. much. Accessible through the scavenger hunt I put across Scarborough. I was gonna ask you about that. So that yeah. I've been paying attention to that. So that's a cool, kind of. Thank you, man. Get people out of the normal. Yeah share and like just posting stuff you know what i mean like it was a wonderful opportunity to explore toronto not well scarborough yeah explore scarborough and just kind of go on my own little adventure so what is it again it's a qr code for your pretty much your, so your tracks and your track would, listing yeah i would leave a password at different locations across Scarborough. Oh, okay. And basically direct people to the password. If you put the password in to the website, the scavenger map, yeah, it unlocks access to the song. Oh, that's dope. So it unlocks access to the poetry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unlocks access to the short film script. Oh, that's awesome. See, that's exactly what we're talking about, man. Like, we came it's, full circle to that. Yeah. It's like your own uniqueness of what content is. It's like it's but it has like, to be content with engagement too. Like that's full full out engagement. I like yeah, that. Man. It it was mad cool. Like and it pushed me in a whole different way. Like it was every week I had to go and drop off these locations. Yeah. And then by the next day I needed to post the video. So I mean everything needed to get edited. Yeah, yeah. It would all need to look good all within a day. Then it's like the next week, prepping the next drops, going to different events doing different things building the waypoints even like everything required time so it was crazy like use of scheduling and time yeah. management and then just having to get the tracks get the tracks mixed yeah get the tracks mastered all right shit yo that's 23 over five months that's huge 
Yeah. That's massive. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, like it was a massive test of discipline and I've learned so much from it. I'm eager to learn, do the things, learn the things. I'm eager to implement you the did, things. Man, that's awesome. That's a great, Thank like, you, brother. Uh, you know, put yourself to the test. Exactly. You know, this is, yeah. and also what we talked about before is just like, get it done. Like there's no time to dwell on it. Get it done. The and then if, it's, if it didn't, if it didn't, if you weren't able to tweak the one that you wanted, do that. That's why you one. have the next one. Do it on the next one. That's why you have yeah, the next one. I love that. Mm, that's good. All we do is work. <laughs> yeah. All we do is work. <laughs> Focus. This is the way. We're grinding, man. Mm-hmm. So, uh, where'd you come up with the name? Like, who did somebody give you that name or something? Negative Q? Yeah. In thermodynamics, negative Q refers to a system that's constantly in a state Ooh. of releasing heat. Damn. That's cool. Did I know that meaning when I came up with the name? Absolutely no. not. I figured that out afterwards. But <laughs> that's the beauty of it, man. You just knew that the, the term it was It called right. to me. It just... Yeah. It, it sat with me there one night and I was like, negative Q. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know what's I right that. it's right. Yeah. Exactly. So do you have any uh, plans for new tracks? That's a long yeah. run. Like that's a... <laughs> but you know what? That's a consistent <laughs> run, man. For all the 23 that's there, yeah, there's like a solid... 23 came up to like 30 to 33 because I needed backups just in case ones didn't go wrong. So if had engineers had ones. had backburn, so I'm sitting on like a good thirty right nice. now. <laughs> nice. So we have projects that are nice. We just need like little minor tweaks here and there. Fix a one two. Get the artworks. Get the names. Get the you know what I mean. All well, that shit. So you can sit on a bit and tweak it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then, you know, it's like fifty cent man. Flood the market. <laughs> 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 Simple. <laughs> Not so simple, but simple. Oh, man, you already got a good work ethic for that. And it's just like, it's just going to improve, man. And you're just going to like... That's all we do. See it change and see it change. And that's you do awesome. better than yesterday? That's fun. I haven't all seen you in a minute, better. too. And it's just like, you've done all this shit. And it's just like, short period of time. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> this guy's really crushing it, man. And then it's like... I look at my stuff and I'm like, I gotta get going. That's it. <laughs> it's like, that's it. That's, yo, for you know? anything else, for anything else, <laughs> work begets work. There's no way when you yeah. don't see somebody else that, like, somebody else you look to and you're like, hey, he's. He's doing it. He's. Fuck, yo, all right, yo, let me. Yeah, let yeah. me boss up real yeah, quick. Yeah, Hold yeah, on, let's, yeah, let's yeah. go. <laughs> I got you too. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yo, yeah. Yeah. You're not coming to the party with all of that and I'm yeah. not bringing nothing. Nah, nah, nah. That's not how it works. We get to work. No, it's a motivational thing, man. It's it's good to see you guys doing that. Like you and Earl. Earl, uh, EM was like 30, same thing, like yeah. 30 months in a row, fucking killer shit. Yeah, like, he's been putting up, it was like a track a month. Yeah. I remember that? Yeah. Same, same consistency. It was insane. Yeah. And, and he's like, always got wicked visuals to go with his shit yeah. too. Like I just, it's a nice short, it's like a short film when he makes these music yeah. videos, and I'm like, especially that one where he's like standing in the middle of the road, and I'm like, it's a solid visual for the track. Yeah, he got some B-roll when he went uh, on just on regular vacations, and I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. always smart. Like you never know when you're gonna use it, like because. When are you going to be in these places again? You might as well grab something. Get some people. You know? That's I've, that's worked out for me a few times. I had this one song called Gamma Ray. And mm-hmm. it was like all this B-roll footage I had from previous trips in the Caribbean. Hey, and it was like, I didn't even intend to shoot a music video, but just I had all this footage. And it was like, worked. And it just, and just actually yeah. worked together. It was like, all right, oh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> why not so, yeah yeah if you're in a spot get some video footage and use it for your music later on man. It's, it makes sense it just ooh no, I, got, I got a plan for that too <laughs> I got a plan for that too all we do is steady scheme exactly Mm-hmm. that's the thing can't turn it off 
Yeah, no. I, uh, I wrote so much during the lockdown that I was just like, okay, this is daunting. So I like made sticky notes and then I went through, you know, process of elimination. And then, so there's like a hundred PDFs on there of songs written from the last four years. So it's like, I've gone through most of them, most of them. Mm-hmm. There's still some that I haven't even read yet. And it's just like latching beats to them. So I'm making beats. I'm going through that list and I'm like, oh, that works. That's working. And then at the mm-hmm. same time, the last few months, it's like new stuff's been popping off. Mm-hmm. And then I did something that I've never done before. It was like make a song in a week, like from the concept to the idea to the so it was Nice. Just, that's, a, that's a good, that's a good, ex- <coughs> it's a good execution test. Yeah. And it's good to be back in like the feeling of, oh shit, this is like becoming something now. Mm-hmm. So I finally have my first like demo of it. So I listened to it and I was like, oh, you can't play it. You understand this. It's like you can't play it for anybody because there's so many uh, mistakes in it still. And there's so many, th- like, you don't want to give that first mm-hmm. impression to somebody away. You like presenting a polished product. Yeah, I, yeah. I do. And maybe there's a selective few that I would share with, but I'm not really that type because it's like, you know, you might already have that preconception of something when you hear it. Yeah. You know? Uh, but yeah, I'm like that and I'm not a big share of lyrics. I don't share a lot. Like it's mm. an old school rapper. But Earl's brought me to like this poetry class gathering. So I, I do like, I'm appreciating like other stuff I can work on that just continues like the exercise Dude, of it you know poetry is the ev- <coughs> the evocation of the soul man like i go to well on top of negative q i am next to martian as well when i publish poetry and that's it's a wonderful space to be in because it's people really just bearing everything onto the page yeah it's just you Purely. Yeah. Think about it. A page, absolutely blank. You fill the page with whatever it is you fill it with. Like, that's that's your soul yeah. on the page. Yeah. And you present that. It's a it's a crazy experience. Yeah. I love poetry. Poetry is great. <laughs> it's, well, rap is poetry. Rap is, like, yes. poetry rap, yes. in a way. Absolutely. And. Absolutely. It's, like. What I mean to say is. In the sense, like, spoken word poetry is the the bearing down. And just being, like, one... It's just one person kind of standing in nothing. And yeah. They create everything in that, yeah. like, blank, empty space. Rap, we're having a conversation. It's a dialogue. Yeah. The beat is conversing with me. It's letting me know how to... It's a narrative, almost. Exactly. Yeah. And it's a call and response between you and the beat in the audience and you're kind of creating this bridge so you're constantly responding it's a different it's a different blend different divide of yeah. the skills yeah. yeah whereas opposed to just listening you're, yeah you're right it's like well the listening is its, it's own beautiful extreme. experience yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a different it's just a different experience absolutely yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I've had all types of responses <laughs> yeah oh yeah me and Dr. Keys we did a few shows mm. around around the southern regions of Ontario mm. this one lady she was yelling at us in, in Oshawa she was mm. like this ain't no jazz you call that jazz she's, oh she goes where's the jazz in your music <laughs> Like almost like a, something out of a cartoon, you know? Oh no. But at the time you're like, oh what a fucking asshole. But when we look at it retrospect, it's like this is some funny ass shit. <laughs> like this is some fucking you're so hilarious grumpy. shit. You're so grumpy you're you know gonna call I mean? the man up for exactly. nothing. Exactly. I like bro It's so goofy. I don't care. Anybody I've had people yell stuff and stuff and it's like that's fine to each his own. Yeah. But 
When you get on my stage, now you're in my fucking cage. It so is. So it's like she yeah. crossed the stage when when Dr. Keys was performing. She like beeline across the stage, and I was like, "Get the fuck off the stage!" And she's like, "Oh, your music sucks." And I was like, "Well, great. There's the door. You can fucking go out the door." Yeah. You know. But you it know, was, nobody said you had to be here. Exactly. It was funny. It was. Lodges. I had the, one of the first times I did the, the, the thing where going back to like not being not caring not care not 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 that you're not caring but like be willing to fuck up so it's like I'm always willing to go back out there mm. with my new stuff mm. knowing it's gonna be a complete disaster so you have to I have to do that again at this age with the new stuff so I'm gonna be doing that with the new stuff so I remember like one of my first times at Tennessee which was the one on Soror and, and Queen there and uh, I, I didn't even know the song it was just like it got into it and it's like I thought I knew some of the verse mm. and people know that you're not into it like know that you're not locked in like that's your mind's talk, in another we're place. talking about that like yeah. you know it's 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 working with the audience and they're vibing, you know. But if you're not, you're not selling it to yourself on stage. They know. Yeah. So it was like a yeah. whole group of people, young kids, that looked at me and like, just got yeah. off and all oh. left. Oh yeah, it was like within the first verse, and it's like, you know that you have to just like, go through it. Yeah. But it's. But that's that's the one. You mess up, you still push through. Yeah. That. In its own regard. Yeah. That's what matters. I saw Eminem 1999 at Warp Tour. Down, down by uh, the docks where they used to have all the loading docks. They used to mm -hmm. do it there. It was like, I think my name is just came out. It was just like a couple months old. Yeah. So a few, a few yeah. people knew him. But there was only like 35 people at his set. It wasn't that much. I remember, like, there wasn't many people. And a few people were throwing water bottles at them. Just because it was different. It was something they had never seen before. And they were just like, that's how they react. It's just like, fuck this guy. And there's just some people just go to cause shit. And some people are just don't know how to react to new shit, right? That fucking, that goes to show you, man. Yeah. I think you can find a video of it online about him. There's about... Oh. He wasn't well received. Not a hundred percent well received, but it was just like a couple people who were just being dicks. Yeah, right? but you just wow. Yeah, I wonder how those people feel today. Yeah, they're knowing that they. <laughs> <laughs> it's like think Dad, back, be like, Dad, you booed Eminem. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Yes, I just. I still love it. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> to, this, to this day, <laughs> to this day. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> but it's like anything, because I've done a lot of my own stuff in small towns, and people just like don't know how to react to it sometimes. So it's a small town, and and I've been in scenarios where it's like, oh, I shouldn't be here, <laughs> probably with my material. <laughs> like we did one in, in Godrich, which was like a, you know, restaurant style. But it's just like tourist type of place where people just eat generic food and drink generic beer. And, you know, people were doing their own thing. And then one of the waitresses was like gently mad when I was playing. And she's like, you need to turn this off. And I was like, yeah, for, no. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to finish my set. And there was this one kid. And his back was facing to me, but he turned around like, like he was interested in hearing what it like mm -hmm. what I was saying. Like nine years old, right? It was mm -hmm. hilarious. But that was fun. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all That's different responses to hip hop, all around Ontario, and That's good responses, and and people just don't know how to respond to it. Really. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I don't know, man. There's always, like, with anything new, there's a period of, like, shock and processing. Yeah. 
So, I mean, that isn't to say, like, people wouldn't know how to react to it a second or a third time. Sometimes it just takes time to acclimate to a new a new flow, a new style, a new composition. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they're like, okay, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I get it. I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes yeah, there was, a, there was an old, I think it was Bob Dylan documentary I saw. Mm-mm-mm. And it was like, he went to these rural towns that have never heard music like this before. And he's playing in their faces. He was like, <laughs> stunned, you know what I mean? Like, completely stunned. And I was like, what is this shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, you don't talk about this stuff with this guitar, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah. Imagine seeing, like, uh, Ray Charles or something for the first time in, like, a heavy, mm. you know, Bible Belt area. And seeing him live for the first time doing his style of music, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, that would, yo, that would change lives, bro. Oh, it probably, like, yeah, it did. They probably be like, have you seen that movie, The One Ray? With, with um, Jamie, Jamie Foxx? Fox? Yeah, I was young, though. Yeah, I should it watch was, it again. Been a, yeah, as definitely. As oh, definitely. And it was like, there's a part in the scene, because they're playing a lot of Chitlin Circuit. Mm-hmm. And it, he's doing his music. These two people come in like that. This you can't say that. That's gospel music. And because he was putting in those lyrics with gospel music, right? Almost the gospel jive. Mm. And uh, he, in the scene in the movie, he's like, "Does anybody want me to stop playing?" And everybody's like, "No." It's like he's playing. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that. But it's a crazy movie. I it's love that. it's such a good movie. So yeah. Well done. He had apparently he had Jamie Fox pick because he had this idea for the movie like a long time ago mm. and because he saw about in living color mm. doing because he knew he was like musically talented and all that stuff mm. so he had him picked out and uh, when he finally got I think it was like he got the blessing from uh, Ray Charles mm. and he was like okay and he met him mm. he met Jamie Foxx and then after like he passed like shortly after that or after they made the movie, I can't remember. Mm. It was something. It was close to that period, so it was like interesting how like. Was it oh, oh six? Yeah, something like that. Where where yeah, he came. Yeah. They made the movie. I think he passed after it. Mm. It's like, it's like he gave this blessing to do this movie. It wow. Was, yeah, it was so well done. Was, that's a that's a powerful thing, man. Jamie Fox has like a very. A very interesting connection with music is like yeah. entertainment in general you know what i mean like he's in these like really crucial moments in hip-hop yeah and in music but like his main bag is acting it's weird because i remember him from the living color like really because that's when he first him and jim carrey right like that's where nah, nah. i remember them watching that show like that was and then then yeah. after you're like oh fuck he's a singer Oh yeah, fuck! Right? He does this. It's like I you knew him firsthand from comedy, right? Mm-hmm. Sketch comedy, and then, was it comedy, music, yeah. and then acting. Yeah, like it's just yeah, and like acting's his main bag, but he just he did gold digger. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's something about sketch comedy that if you can do that, you can pretty much do anything. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a lot of just, yeah. Made up stuff. I I went to a, a, a grade seven eight school, which was like art school, mm-hmm. and it was like every day whole room was either theater or music. Same. And I wasn't in music, so we did like sketches on yeah. Monday morning, and we it was like after the day after Living Color was on. Mm-hmm. So it was like we had all these ideas, <laughs> fucking crazy sketches, and they're like teachers like, all right, whatever. I guess you saw that on TV. Just oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, it was that was a good show. I actually took mm. a a comedy sketch writing course. Yeah. In Humber, mm. and it was with Joe Fl- uh, no, David Flaherty, who was like one of the co-founders mm. of SCTV mm. writer, and it was only supposed to be like a like correspondence course, like mm. emails and phone calls. But he was impressed that I like could produce my own stuff and mm. I was making my own sketches so we mm. got together for coffee a few times met 
and uh, I told you a lot of like basic stuff about how to write comedy, mm -hmm. but I kind of applied that to music as well. Oh, of course. The concepts and dude, no skill is not transferable. So I had, I was closing closing to thirty. So in my late twenties, I wrote all these comedy, uh, like shows. I wrote like three shows, and I had like twelve episodes for each show. So I saw all these fucking pages of scripts and shit. So I went to, and this is before I just started becoming like a solo music artist. Mm. And I went to Italy and I had this dream and it was like a split road. And it was like, either do the comedy thing or the music thing. Because you can't put your energy to both of them and expect to really do good, right? I see. So I was like, I gotta go with the music just because my age really. And, mm. and I just... Put the comedy stuff on the, the side burner, mm -hmm. and then I just went full out with the music. Like, mm -hmm. So, or I always wanted to do some more comedy into my stuff. What if? Fire. Here fed we go. fire. Here we go. <laughs> what if fire fed fire? Yeah. What if as you, like, um, there was something we learned in elementary school. And it was, you know, the practice of using different fields to farm. Yeah. And rotating crops between fields. Yo. Because different different crops require different nutrients from the soil. So when you switch it around, it allows the soil to replenish different. It, there's a cycle of things. Yeah. So I think about that with art. Make music. And then you're like, okay, I've made music. So as to not overwork that muscle. Yeah. You kind of take a pivot, run comedy for a minute. Yeah. Do a little one two, and you're like, I feel sustained in this. Yeah. Go back to music. Do a little film. Yeah. Do, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. It's a, yeah. Well, I have a few scripts already, and then I have like a, a action thriller script I wrote hey, like yeah. 25 years 20 years ago alright so yo who so, no, nobody writes a script and doesn't have an actor or actress nobody writes a script no. and doesn't have a cast in mind no, I who's had, in your movie oh man that's a tough one for this type of movie it would be an action hero but it was all, not really it would be 20 kind years of, ago so I wrote it about uh, yeah I don't want to get into it too much no, 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 you, you don't have to give it away. I'm just thinking, I'm like, action movie, 2004. Was this like a gritty action movie? Yeah, yeah, in a way. 04, gritty. Was there a little bit of like snarky comedy? Like snarky humor? Yeah, yeah. Jason Statham. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's a good pick. That time when my friend called me and he's like, yo, there's this thing called YouTube. You should check it out. <laughs> yeah, early days of YouTube. Let's go. Like five, man. I'm sit. Oh man, that was. I'd write. A, I'd be writing this script. This I remember. I was writing this script at my dad's office because I'd always wait for him mm. to get off work to drive home. So I'd write. I would be writing the script, and then I talked to my friend all the time, mm. and he called me and he's like, "You should check out this thing called YouTube." And it's, I'm like, what the fuck's that? He goes, it's your own TV channel. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, <laughs> it's like, you can put your own content in it. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? That's so cool. I got on it early, but I didn't do shit with it. This is my Yo, bad. Like we didn't... I was up on like 2007, man. Dude, nobody, like, nobody was, <laughs> not nobody was thinking like this, but like. Not many people. Bro, I, w I remember I was just like. We were in school. That was our access to like the dumb shit in the world. Yeah. Like it was just like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are people? Yeah. What are people doing? Yeah. Fucking like I used to watch the early anime music video edits. Yeah. Fucking um, Naruto versus Sasuke, but with in the end yeah. by Linkin Park. Yeah. Playing over it, yo, that shit went crazy. Yeah. And like that's what YouTube was for. It was just these, like cool pocket videos. Be like I could show my. I can show my friends this one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I, we miss that. I miss that whole era because if I were, like, you know, five years younger, we made some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but we had no cell phones, right? Mm. So it's like, we didn't capture it. And if we did, we probably would have. Yeah. You know? Like, and we would 
really done jackass shit. Like, we did shit like fucking get in the shopping cart and go down the hill. Yeah. We had this thing called, like, uh, you know the GT Snow Racers? Mm -mm -mm. We used to do crash up derbies, like, down the hill and, like, pretty much kill each other. <laughs> like, we were fucking crazy. We yeah. survived, man. Yeah. Do you want but, to go jousting? Yeah. Oh, when, instead of driving beside each other, we just drive into each other. We did so. I then because I grew Superman. up all this fucking heck shit. I grew up. I went to high school in Newmarket, so it was all these like small towns around it. Mm. I know guys that I didn't do it, but it's like guys who would in the winter they'd hang on the back of the bumper. Mm, mm, mm. and then like somebody would stop and then eat the fucking it's like mm. we were doing lots of this shit before you your kidneys just like, yeah Ugh. it's just there was a finally there was a platform to capture all this nonsense mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, when my buddy first started showing me those jackass tapes I was like holy shit and that's like though those that type of production started ending up on YouTube mm. and then that's when they like people start blowing up and making a lot of dough. Mm. You know, you're familiar with like FaZe and all the video game guys. So I worked that stuff. I worked, I just worked the Call of Duty thing mm -mm, as a camera mm -mm. operator and I like talked to some of these guys and that's really? fucking crazy shit, man. Like, oh, you want to talk about YouTube stars? It's like the first real mega YouTube stars are like video game players. Yeah. Like huge yeah. video game. Like, yeah. Yo, man, just seeing that shit back in the day, you're like, it has, it can't be real, it can't be real. Yeah, it's just like the sensitivity is like twelve, and they yeah. just like, just, yeah, like two, like uh, eight milliseconds or some shit. I don't fucking know. Yeah, but like it's really fucking on. quick and just, and yeah. it's a sniper one shot headshot. Yeah, one shot headshot. These one shot headshot. Like you know what I mean? Professional. You know, they're like NHL players for video games. Mm -hmm. They're like fucking NBA players for video games. And they're getting like rock star money. Mm. It's fucking crazy. And YouTube was basically a product of that. Like YouTube helped catapult that. And so I want to I'm kind of round, round out here. I think I'm running out of steam. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, my basic thing is, is what I'm trying to say is that this is why I'm trying to get on this podcast stuff. And I've already had it for a while. Is like now the technology is great for us solo music artists. Like Facts. early ten years ago, 50, maybe fifteen years ago, like twenty ten, it really benefited comedians. Mm -hmm. And before that, like we were just saying, uh, video game stars. Yeah. To make it them independent enough that they could all make a living off it. So now I think the concept of like what you're doing like everybody's doing content but it all circles around your music yeah. so there will not be a, a music label anymore what you call artistry like, you're just gonna have a group of people working with you that's the label and it's like every individual solo uh, music artist indie artist is gonna be able to make a living not every but it's like the ones who really work hard it's like that's what uh, podcast really did for comedians and I think that's mm. what social media and not social media but like uh, you know video content is gonna do for for us you know yeah I mean? and it's like absolutely cause also we have something mm -hmm. that somebody else that a lot of the industry well comedy kind of does that too but it's like everything we make has a uh, stamp code on it so it's yeah. like if you own all your shit there's five ways of getting paid off of each piece Mm, mm, mm. No matter where you put it out, right? Like videos, you know, absolutely uses more. it for something or so absolutely. More. I'm pot. I'm. I'm I will. think this is gonna be the good era for indie artists. I think so. So there's so much, whew, <laughs> there's so much music to be made. Anything you want to add or just like um, or? jinkies? This has been a fantastic experience. Focus. Thanks for coming, Thank man. you so much for having me. Um, wicked podcast, a wicked space. It's a good feel. Um, yeah, it's cool shit, man. Thanks, man. Thank Continue you. to pump out the volume. All we do is work. All right, cheers, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, folks. Have a good night. Peace.